Welcome into the Alabama Football Report. I am your host, R.C. Maxfield, and week six of the Alabama Crimson Tide slate is here, and they will head down to Texas to face off against the Texas A&M Aggies, who are no longer ranked in this one after their loss at home to Mississippi State. Instead, it will just be one ranked opponent in College Station this weekend in the number one Alabama Crimson Tide. But before we get into the preview, we need to talk about some injuries that are really piling up at the linebacker position for the Alabama Crimson Tide, and that will lead into Drew Sanders, who is set to miss this game, according to Nick Saban after having surgery to fix a finger hand issue that he uh, sustained just last week. So you're losing another linebacker when, in, when really you've already lost a really key linebacker in Harris early on in the season, and now you're getting a little bit thin. But the best part about Alabama is – even when you lose a guy like Drew Sanders, you're probably going to put a five-star or four-star guy back there, and that's where Chris Braswell comes in, who has 10 tackles on the year so far, the Baltimore, Maryland native, and he's really got an aggressive style of playing, as we all know, and I think he could fit in very easily in Drew Sanders' spot, but Drew Sanders is one of those guys where I've been pleasantly surprised. I had high expectations for him, but he's living up to them and then some so far for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Another guy that could potentially take some of those snaps that Drew Sanders leaves behind, freshman Dallas Turner, the Fort Lauderdale, Florida native, has four tackles, was one of the best pass rushing, edge rushing type guys in the class of 2021, is now going to get a chance to be on the field a little bit more with Drew Sanders out. Hopefully Drew Sanders only misses this game. Nick Saban said it would be a week-to-week, -week, game to game type situation with the sophomore linebacker, but it looks like it could potentially avoid serious injury in terms of missing four to six weeks. But let me know before we get into this preview who you got between the number one Alabama Crimson Tide and Texas A&M Aggies. I better be seeing a lot of Bama down in the comments below because, well, there's an 18-point spread in this one, and uh, I'm taking Alabama all the way, and you can take Alabama, too, over on BetUS. Go to chatsports.com slash TideBet and get, use the promo code Tide125 to get the best deposit bonus on the Internet, 125% deposit bonus. Again, all you have to go do is go to chatsports.com slash tide bet once you're there use the promo code tide 125 to get 125 percent deposit bonus you put 100 in they give you 125 you got 225 total nobody else is doing that on the internet let's look at how alabama has fared so far against the money line the spreads over under the money line five and oh take that alabama money line and run at this point the spread and over under it's a little dicey, but I'm feeling good about that 18-point spread this weekend against the Texas A&M Aggies, against the team that really struggled last week against Mike Leach in terms of, what, what are we doing here? You're supposed to be better than Mississippi State, but instead they lose. They fall to 3-2, and two, and now we move on in the sense that, well, what are they going to do in terms of trying to beat the number one team in the country? Not sure how that goes for them, but I know for a fact if you go to chatsports.com slash TideBet and use the promo code Tide125, you will get the best deposit bonus on the internet. I can promise you that from BetUS. Let's jump into the storylines for number one Alabama at Texas A&M. The first one, stopping Isaiah Spiller is going to be key in the sense that Isaiah Spiller is one of the best running back in the country, in my opinion. Now, at the QB position for the Aggies, it's a little interesting there, right? Can you get pressure on the quarterback King, their starting quarterback to begin the season, sustained a serious leg injury, and will be out for this game. So they will be starting their backup quarterback who has three starts on the year now. Does Alabama fix their O-line issues? They've Looked like they have against those, you know, lesser opponents and Mercer and Southern Miss struggled a little bit last week as well against Old Miss, but they were on a really good track in terms of fixing those issues. Now, can the snaps be fixed and can they protect Bryce Young against an Aggie front that has quite a bit of talent? The next one, Alabama has to have a quick start on the road in terms of when you look at what Alabama is going into, it's going to be a hostile environment, right? College Station, Texas, the 12th man, it's known for their fans, right? Whether you like them or not, and we all know that you don't, but you have to get off to a quick start and not even give the Aggies any kind of hope in terms that they can be in this game with the number one team in the country, which I don't think they can because 
Alabama is far more talented than Jimbo Fisher's crew, but you have to see that quick start to not even give a glimmer of hope to the Aggies. And last but not least on this one, who is RB2 with Jace McClellan out for the season with a knee injury? Nick Saban alluded to it earlier in the week that McClellan will miss the rest of the season due to a knee injury, and you have a ton of options, right? for this Alabama Crimson Tide team, but who is going to step up? Is it going to be Roy Dell Williams? Is it going to be Trey Sanders? You have plenty of options, but you need to know who is going to be the guy behind Brian Robinson Jr., who is the clear-cut RB1 for the Crimson Tide moving forward. Now, I need you to do this for me. If you love the Crimson Tide and love what we're doing here at Chat Sports, I'm just asking for a simple like, right? That's it. Just like this video and let us know that you enjoy what we're doing over here. We're giving you game previews, recruiting updates, the latest rumors when it comes to Alabama and their football team. Let us know that you're enjoying the content we're putting out there. Almost daily videos right here on the Alabama Football Report. All we ask is hit that like button for us. Mentioned Isaiah Spiller earlier in this one, the Spring Texas native and Really, when you look at the A&M offense, right, and what they do, everything goes through him. He is their offense entirely, and it makes a lot of sense. He's one of the best running backs in the country, and the A&M offense goes through him, and really, there's no really second option, right? If they cannot get the run game going, the Aggies struggle, and I mean struggle at anything else, right? Again, I alluded to it earlier, King, their starting quarterback, to begin the year, will be out. It is now Zach Calzada at the QB position for the Aggies, and he has looked, um, well, below average to be nice about it, right? When you have a completion percentage almost at 50%, not ideal if you were a Power 5 quarterback in the SEC and you want to beat a team like the number one team in the country in the Alabama Crimson Tide. Now, he has thrown for 744 yards, five TDs, and one interception, but if you can get pressure on Calzada, he will make bad decisions with pressure. Just simple and plain. That's what's going to happen. If you can get in his face, he has shown that he will make bad decisions for the Crimson, against the Crimson Tide and the other teams that the Aggies have faced this season. He will make bad decisions. And Alabama has a lot of pass rushers. You may have heard of one. Will Anderson Jr., probably the best defensive player in all of college football. I expect him to have a huge game and make it a nightmare-type night for, Cal for Zach Calzada. Now, on the offensive line, Evan Neal, we know he is the guy that leads the ship for this unit, but guys around him are going to have to step up. You've had a couple of bad snaps against Old Miss. Now you really want to get in there and fix some of those issues that the offensive line still has, and they do still have issues. I know on the overreaction show earlier in the week, I said that the offensive line was fixed. Again, that's why it's called the overreactions. It's not true on that one, in my opinion. I think the offensive line still has issues that need to be addressed. If you can address them against an Aggies pass rush that is pretty formidable against that offensive line, I will feel a lot better moving forward in SEC play for the Crimson Tide in that offensive line unit. Now we got to talk about the man, the myth, the legend, Bryce Young. He is having a Heisman-type start to his First full season as the Crimson Tide starter, 17 TDs, two interceptions, and damn near 1,400 yards. And one of those interceptions, again, more Jamison Williams' fault than his in terms that Jamison Williams tipped it up. Hit him in the hands. You got to catch that one, Jamison. I'm just saying. But Bryce Young has to go off to a quick start, and so does the entire Alabama offense in College Station. Just because, again, as I mentioned, you don't want to give these guys any hope, right? They're coming off of a bad loss against Mike Leach's Mississippi State Bulldogs at home. You need to come out and just give this team absolutely, absolutely no hope, excuse me, in front of that quote-unquote best raucous environment in the land in the 12th man. Don't, don't give me that crap, though, A&M. We know that Brian Denny Stadium is the best place to watch a football game in the country. If you can give these fans no hope and you can give these players no hope on the opposite sideline with the Aggies, Listen, you're going to be golden, and you're going to be headed back to Tuscaloosa 6-0. Last but not least, who steps up as the RB2? I mentioned it. Jace McClellan will be out for the season. We have his season best numbers right there against Southern Miss. That was the game for me that I thought was going to propel him and be that really guy that maybe you split with Brian Robinson Jr. To no avail as he will be out with, for the season due to a knee injury, and I fully expect a guy that y'all want in the comments and have been asking for for weeks in Trey Sanders. Sanders should be the guy behind Robinson Jr., in my opinion. He is the second most talented running back 
on this team after Jace McClellan's departure with a knee injury. I'm looking forward to seeing what Trey Sanders can do. Obviously, we know his story in terms of everything that's gone wrong and how he had to battle back just to be on the field. This is a golden opportunity for Trey Sanders to get back in there and really show that talent that he had coming out of high school before he sustained really one of those gruesome things that really nobody should have to go through in life, but he did. And now Trey Sanders is going to really show that full talent that he has on a grand scale for the Alabama Crimson Tide. But let me know before we get out of here, which storyline are you watching most between Alabama and Texas A&M? It's probably me. I want to see Trey Sanders. I want to see if Trey Sanders does take that RB2 job and run with it. I think he is the second most talented running back now with Jace McClellan out. I'm very interested to see how those carries divvy up because remember, Brian Robinson last week had 35 plus carries against the then number 12 Ole Miss Rebels. Interested to see if maybe that decreases a little bit because Nick Saban wants to save him for the long term. We know how he loves to use his running backs, but I'm interested to see how Trey Sanders looks. And I'm interested to see if Alabama can cover this 18 and a half point spread. I fully expect them to cover it down in College Station, one of the most raucous environments in college football. But listen, when you play in Bryant-Denny Stadium week in and week out like the Alabama Crimson Tide do, the 12th man down in College Station, that's just a blimp on the radar. You don't really pay much attention to him. Let me know down in the comments, though, who you got in this matchup between the number one Alabama Crimson Tide and Texas A&M Aggies. I better be seeing a lot of Bamas down in the comments because you know I've got Bama winning this one and propelling themselves to 6-0 and and sitting pretty as the number one team in the country.